Welcome to the Intercut Podcast Channel, the weekly place to check the latest on movies, TV, and entertainment that people can't cut away from. I am your co-host, the lost nephew of Baron Harkonnen, and I am joined by both the Reverend Mother and Lisa and Al-Gaim. Oh. oh, I got Lisa. You got to be the Reverend Mother. All right. Some chip and chatter. Okay. I got some powerful, powerful co-hosts. <laughs> I would have taken the worm. <laughs> Not even the grandmother worm. I would have taken the small one. Oh, she would salute. I forget, I'm forgetting Hi. Hi, uh, hi, Shalud. Um, hi, Salud. Hi, Salud. Yeah, yeah. hi, Salud. Uh, if, if that is not evidence enough, we are not like Dune book reader, yeah. aficionado. Yeah, we're not. Rattle off every name in the vocabulary. Mm-hmm. We like the movies. Yeah. Wouldn't that be crazy, though? I just hit you with every single planet, whatever else. I did find out that <laughs> what the original. In book eight? <laughs> yeah. I don't even know if there's eight. I heard that Dune has like a bunch of places or names that they ended up naming Saturn's uh, moon. Yeah. After. So, yeah. like, Titan's got a bunch of Dune names. So that's as nerdy as I go <laughs> in yeah. terms no, of what cool. I've read. But uh, we're getting there, dude. I, I brought the book with me. Yeah. I'm, chip, I, I'm chipping away at it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I'm the opposite. I didn't want to read it because, like, these movies really? have been so fun right. to kind of watch. And I agree. Like, you watch the first one, and I'm like, it seems like it's doing things we've already seen, but it's because it did them first in book form, mm-hmm. and everybody else took them. Right. And then it's kind of watching how it's going to be, like, right from that first movie, you're like, is this going to be, like, a subverted hero's journey? Yeah. Or, yeah, and, like... Yeah. It was much. always subverted. They weren't doing something different yeah. with the book. It was mm-hmm. always there to begin with. Yeah. It's like you're finally hearing the comedian who owns the punchline deliver it properly. Yeah. Not George Lucas, not yeah, every yeah. other version of it, which has been fascinating <laughs> seeing people come out of it and go, why does it look familiar? But why does it feel like this wasn't what stole? This is what was stolen from. Yeah. And uh, he's knocked it out of the park. Then he's done it. Mm-hmm. He's done it. Yeah, I mean, it is a pretty epic piece of blockbuster filmmaking. I think we all really, really, really enjoyed it. We already have a long, almost hour-long review on our channel, which is our first review that has our non-spoilery thoughts on the movie, but we wanted to dive a little more deeply Mm -hmm. into what we saw, into what we thought, into the specifics of the plot. So if you don't want any of the Dune experience spoiled for you, this is your off-ramp opportunity. Uh, We are going to start getting into plot details and only get more and more into them as we go. Uh, but with that said, I mean, Dune, it's the second time that Denis has brought us to Arrakis. We're picking the action up off pretty shortly after the... Yeah, they still have the Jameis's body. Yeah, they, yeah. yeah. They're yeah. still carrying They're still carrying it. Exactly, the climactic fight where Timmy and Jummy skid into yeah. that yep. uh, knife fight. And yeah, they're they're returning back to... Uh, is it Arrakeen or what? Yeah, some, mm. Arrakeen. Um, and, and you see that... Um, Paul is starting to pick up the ways of the Fremen in terms of how they fight. They have that mm-hmm. uh, battle with the Harkonnens in the desert. But a lot of this early chapter of the movie is sort of uh, Paul going through the ropes of the Fremen culture, mm-hmm. learning their ways, learning the ways of the desert. Uh, we get all sorts of really interesting looks into like what their life is like and uh, uh, the different ways they've managed to survive in the desert. I don't know if I've ever seen something quite like those machines that drain the water yeah. out of people. Uh, really metal. Yeah, <laughs> pretty cool. Craziest they're way cool. to loot a body. Yeah, literally. <laughs> yeah. literally. Uh, but I think that whole sequence where they are sort of draining the water out of the uh, slaughtered Harkonnen soul Uh, It highlights one small thing that I like about how Dune is approaching this style of filmmaking. There's that moment where uh, Lady Jessica is watching it and she starts to uh, dry heave or throw throw up a little bit. And uh, Bardem, or or Stilgar in the movie, uh, tells her... (laughs) Still, still, Gar in the movie tell, uh, tells her like, "Don't waste your your water. Don't yeah. don't do it. Don't do it. it. Don't and do it." I, th- I feel like there's a lot of movies out there that sort of have this very like Deadpoolian glib approach to humor, where somebody's then got to like have a funny line about, "Oh, yeah. I'm gonna lose my lunch or whatever." But it's it's able to be sort of more subtly funny yeah. In, yeah. in those moments. And the the films have a reputation for being kind of stark and serious. Yeah. But I think they also have these moments that are a lot of fun. There were so many in this one. Like yeah. basically anything. You think too many? To, well, no, they, they well maybe, but maybe it's because that's the only thing I saw before going in were the memes. And that's what I think has happened. People have funny. been so marvelized that they hear funny and they go, "Oh, they're doing the marvel." No humor no. exists. It's actual funny, yeah. and it makes sense completely in context yeah. of the story. Because every time it's just like Lisa Nagaib, it's, it's great. so funny, and it's you see so, why people are making. There were yeah. people sitting next to us who were laughing at the memes on screen. Yeah, <laughs> like no, that's, those are images from the film. They're like, no, right. I got to see it live, I got to see bro. It. They came to see a meme live. Yeah, they're like, oh my god, is it the thing? They, they saw it like change in real time yeah. it's ridiculous but yeah. i thought the comedy worked perfectly yeah, yeah. it fits it the does. fanatical type of mindset that they have i think a lot of people have connected to it because they know people who are like this totally. yeah. i think most 
instances of this they see it and they're disgusted by it because most people will cover this and like they're the fanatical religious person uh, i called it the relative that you would know who like found christ way too late in right. life yeah. and now yeah. is overdoing it but people are connecting with it because it again some people are even rooting for paul yeah. and people are rooting for the fremen who don't realize they're getting duped they're getting and i don't know if you need that from the jump but they're getting, getting duped, duped. Like yeah. centuries before yeah. any of this has been here. It's Everyone's been being used, including your hero. <laughs> yeah. Right. Crazy story. Yeah. While this is a world that is very distant from our own and has these really fantastical elements to it, it is like pretty explicitly in the text about religious fanaticism. They come yeah. from Earth, oh, though, very. right? Because like, yeah, I mean, it's, there's it's, some name drops. And there's also, they t it say it's like the year 10,000 something. So this is yeah. the distant, distant future. Well into yeah. the future. But yeah. Yeah. I like the idea that it's like removed from us, but not that far removed yeah. from yeah. us. It's, it's just us in space. Yeah. yeah. But it's all, the, there's all these elements that sort of reflect our own culture whether yeah. it is the you know you look at the people who are more religious fanatics mm -hmm. in the in the world of dune and it, they kind of, i think denny makes a really interesting point to cast more older people and mm -hmm. a lot of the younger mm -hmm. people are more skeptical or let more we'll let you know the people with the accent yeah there, there's the even like the, the divide between the north yeah. and the south yeah. who is the young more and the old yeah like you're saying all the young people they believe in themselves they want to do it and they don't even realize they're almost a part of the prophecy they're almost yeah you know part of the the as it said later, uh, part of the ritual without them even knowing it. And yeah. I don't know, I found that stuff fascinating. And again, yeah. why the comedy works so well. I think people <laughs> would turn on these characters in a second and somehow they've all embraced them. They're, yeah. all, they're all all of a sudden fascinating well, with spirituality. Yeah, it's it's just like... It's a it's, psyop. Yeah, it's a... It's a Everyone's yeah. going to go back. It's a revival. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, think, I think most of us can relate either to being spiritual or being confronted with people who yeah. are much more spiritual than you are yeah. and that d navigating that divide. But I, I really love this one moment with Stilgar when he talks to uh, some kind of council or something about he believes he's found the Muad'i or uh, the Lisa Nadi yes. and uh, they say again. They again. laugh literally, at him. Literally, yeah. literally, that's Qui-Gon Jinn. I, I, that's, literally, that's literally Qui-Gon Jinn. Mm, yeah. With Anakin, when he's like, he's like, this is the chosen one. It's like every you, you bring us a new chosen right, one. Right. This one's way too old. There's no way. And Qui Gon's like, I will put my life on the line for him. And if I can't take him because I've already had a Padawan, my Padawan is being forced to train him now. Mm -hmm. Like it's just like, and that's the same thing with Stilgar. He's like, I will kill myself so he can take my spot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's how much he believes in what this is. Mm -hmm. And it was like wild to me that I was like, oh my god, Qui Gon, my favorite character is just. You see Stilgar. it like there it is. <laughs> yeah. Do you think when he read it in the book? Uh, Getty Prime, he went, J J Jedi? Jedi? <laughs> <laughs> he still thinks on accident. Can I change my name? Oh, damn. Yeah, now you're uh, Getty the Jedi. <laughs> Amanda the Getty. Amanda the Getty. <laughs> but no, I agree with you. It's it's a it's a, uh, a really great way to showcase what it is to be swallowed up in all of this. And that scene really stood out the second time because it's like, wait, they laugh at you? Yeah. It's yeah, the first time it's like, oh, it's just the kids. They're laughing at him. Mm -hmm. The older people are laughing at him as yeah. well. Nobody believes this is going to happen. Yeah. And in that instance as well, it's actually the first scene. The reason it really stood out to me mm. is the first scene he goes full IMAX mm. yeah. for all of it. Mm -hmm. You're getting glimpses here of attacks and stuff. But he's like, nah, this interior scene in a cave is so important. I need to he see. He accentuated mm -hmm. it in that way. Yeah. Totally. And it's fantastic talk mm -hmm. and it really adds to his character. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's... Uh, as, as Paul sort of uh, gets brought in, they, he's forced to, you know, undergo some uh, trials to mm -hmm. sort of prove himself to the Fremen. Mm -hmm. Likewise, uh, Jessica is yeah. has to be useful to them somehow, so they enlist her to become the Reverend Mother and really? drink the water of life. Yes, she didn't, the water she didn't of even life. bother. Like she went through the same thing Paul did, right? It's like, okay, we're kind of a part of this, and she's like, oh, that's the part. She didn't blink twice. We have half a movie of Paul going, I guess I got to do it. She did that in 10 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> Immediately. Well, first she was kind of like, well, if I don't, they're going to kill me. Kill us. Yeah. So, like, the the Bener and Jezreel don't fuck around, though. They're, they don't. they're people of action. Yeah. Bro, the line, Women we don't action. hope, we plan, yeah. Yeah. is a bar. It's a bar. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and Lady Jessica drinks, after drinking the water of life, sort of becomes uh, imbued with the knowledge of... Yeah the past and the present grandmothers are a big through line yeah. you have yeah. that part there's the visions that he also gets to the grandmothers one of the worms yeah. is called the grandmother worm yeah, yeah. And it's a it's a worm. Yeah. yeah well at the end he says uh the last one was a grandmother, grandmother. yeah the first I'm one like, was oh grandmother. damn yeah so i know denny said that was a big thing when he read the book and mm. being raised by grandmothers that, nice. that was a big through line he brought here because other than timmy i feel like everything on the exterior to him is seen by his mom is seen by Chani. Yeah. It's seen by a woman. Mm. Yeah. To the point that even some deleted scenes would have been stuff with the emperor. And they're like, no, no, no. If we can't see it through his daughter, a Ben Jesuit, then we're yeah. not going to have it in the movie. Mm. 
So yeah, isn't there like Good an focus. entire theory that like the Lisa Al Gaib was originally supposed to be like Paul was supposed to be a girl? Oh, are we getting there? Oh, yes. I don't know. Hold, no, no, hold on to yeah. that. We're going to get to we'll that in the end, especially we'll with the sister, but yeah, yeah keep going sister. with the beginning. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah well, one thing that we, we, two things we didn't mention. The first thing that they mentioned in this movie is uh, power over spice, is, or is control over... Or, spice, is, yeah. Uh, control over spice is power over all? Yeah. Yeah, power over spice is power over all. There we yeah. go. I wrote it down. Because uh, it's done in the Sardaukar voice at the beginning. Yeah. yeah. People have been doing theories over under <laughs> who's it going to be at the end. Mm. Yeah. Who may be saying that. I just love that it happens before the studio logo. Right. That's what It's like Danny's yeah. going, no, no, no. Let me speak first. Yeah. Then you can get the corporate stuff out of the way. Yeah, I like that, actually. I noticed that. That. so like, dope i like that yeah uh and then also uh we didn't mention that the the thing that happens after the studio logo is that we get florence Pugh's character yes. princess um sort of bringing us up to speed writing in her diary mm-hmm. i don't know if you thought that was a shout out to paul schrader <laughs> she does it, she does it in the book <laughs> I, I will say the one that got me was to match cut the lens flare to a fetus? Yeah, yeah dude. We, we got to talk. So that's a great place to circle back to Lady Jessica. There are a yeah. lot of shots of fetus. Like, a lot of fetus. Uh, like uh, supernatural ultrasounds or something yeah. going like on a here. pro-life commercial yeah, that we're watching up action. on screen. Yeah, it's crazy. When Lady Jessica drinks the water of life, the Fremen get really concerned uh, for they, a moment. They, yeah. they did not realize she was pregnant. And I don't know it, what they thought was going to happen, but uh, the fetus gets imbued with consciousness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Well, she said, didn't she say the baby was already talking to her before that? She did, what but it time? seems it seems much more... What is time? What is time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it seems uh, m- much more talkative. It kickstarted yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's definitely more talkative after, but I think, That's well, when they, the child probably thought, the they probably thought the baby would die, too, and then also, what, yeah. that, like, it yeah. would probably make a kid that was... I was a little confused was, by that reaction. I also, well, I feel like there's probably two two ways. It's either that, because she could die, and they assumed she was going to die, that the right. baby could die, too, or they know that this does such a fucked up thing to the brain mm-hmm. that it was going to do something to this kid, to kid. And yep. then the kid is going to be born. And they weren't the one who was supposed and to be going through it. weren't supposed yeah. to be going through it. Weren't we're supposed to have that knowledge. Or there's only supposed to be one at a time. Because mm-hmm. that's why they had to like transfer it from that one woman to yeah. her. So there's actually maybe only one person supposed to have that like consciousness and um, they do have different things because she had such as like there's a bunch of uh yeah. reverend mothers Rever- i don't know places. what they do but they do different things yeah um i i just think that they were probably very concerned about the implications of what would happen to someone who didn't naturally go through life and right. then get the experience to get yeah. to the point where they could ex- accept that and then just be born that way well they should be worried because this baby is crazy it's crazy yeah. she's yeah. arguing with the mom the mom's telling herself to shut up she's looking down in her stomach yeah. for half these scenes <laughs> and i think that uh, i'm pretty sure that when we see something in the future like whatever happens in the third movie yeah. we're gonna rewatch this i'm sure just like we're already rewatching the first going wait wait like that was already answered like you don't even mm-hmm. realize some of the parallels that are happening oh yeah and if this baby can control the mom mm-hmm. is it controlling timmy like what is it not oh, it controlling definitely definitely. dude timmy timmy drank some piss and it was instantly <laughs> like <laughs> we're taking we the first jessica everyone. drank the piss yeah, yeah. we gotta get to the word yeah. piss but sorry uh, no 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 it's uh, a little one track there's so many <laughs> <laughs> There's so many things to talk about with dude. Uh, so Lady Jessica the piss survives. Them all. The piss does connect them all. Sur- survives unexpectedly, yeah. which uh, Silgar, of course, takes as a sign that, uh, of it's course, he's Lisa like Al yeah. That man had 20 revivals. And she was something, too. That it was, right. she was meant part to be Part of the that. prophecy. She's part of the prophecy. Otherwise, she would have died and the baby would have died and because the baby didn't. But she's forcing all. it. That's the bit of it. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's, so that's what I really saw the second time around. It's like. Just because they believe that doesn't matter. You are a con man, a yeah. con woman yeah. through and through. Through and through. Yeah. So, so it's in this part that Charney starts to talk about how the prophecy isn't something that is comes from the Fremen. This is something that the Bene Gesserit has given to them, right? Yes. And I don't know if this is meant to uh, re- reflect like the way that colonizing colonizing cultures often mm-hmm. sort of give religion to the people they oppress as a way of yes, absolutely, distracting them and stuff yeah. like that. Uh, but you know, th- it, it plays into this whole idea of like, are you waiting to be saved or are you going to put put it into action? And yeah. Um, yeah. That, that's like the central conflict with this this Fremen uh, culture yeah. that Chani finds herself on the opposite side of with, with Sil- Stilgar. And for me, I think the first time I watched part two, one of my confusions, I, w- I should, I would say is the way that Chani's character sort of like oscillates on her feelings towards 
Paul because she and what what I was clear more clear to me on the second run through is like she really believes in him as a person. Person, yeah. She she yeah. really How could you not? He exactly. proves it. He does. He yeah. proves it and he wanted to prove it. Yeah. But she really you know? does not believe in the prophecy. No. So yeah. she's trying to sort of like uh, right, balance yeah. those conflicting ideas. Yeah. And he was on but he was her on side, her side for the longest time. It was like, yeah. you know, I'll, you know, because he literally, like, he screams at people. He's mm-hmm. like, that's not hope. Like, not right. yeah, they should multiple, rule themselves. Told multiple times how much he could get. And he's like, nah, I don't want to sign on to this yeah. at all. And then the midway point happens. And it really is heartbreaking because you see it in both of them. Yeah, they are too. set. They've completely, like, they're ready to start a family. And then he realizes he needs to do something, as we'll get into. But I, I agree yeah. with you. Just the approach that Chani had was realizing that, uh, like you're saying, it, it's ironic that they have blue eyes because I feel like that's a big part of colonization yeah. in, in terms of, you know, spreading Christianity here. But there it's like she knew already that the Bene Gesserit, as they even say in another scene, you set up something just to become the hero. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You let the war happen so that you can be the one who ended it. But you so can't end a war process, if process, it hasn't started. Yeah. yeah. So it's like they're just creating a problem to fix it. It's that old thing of like you break windows because, you know, you actually, you run a window company (laughs) and you need to sell some stuff. Yeah. They had it through and through. So Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's it's a tough one. Yeah. We also get some scenes of uh, combat where the, the Fremen attack uh, the the harvesters and stuff. Yeah. I mean, I think Denny is one of our top tier visualizers of just like, uh, a fully lived in world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'd compare him to James Cameron in that sense. I agree. Um, I, I don't, I don't know I if I'd him put him up. quite on that, like <laughs> top tier of like action directors in terms of like, like not like a Stahelski or like yeah. a, or, or like a Cameron at times, but like, it's maybe like an A minus. It's, it's I, really, a, I almost would give him the not. I am very, um, it's very easy for me to totally start losing focus in action yeah. scenes. I'm just kind of like, is it uh, done yet? Uh, yeah, exactly. Not off. That's yeah. almost why I like the Marvel quippiness because it's mm-hmm. constantly moving you and kind of keeping you engaged and dynamic. And I feel like Denny, it's just the way things yeah. move are very... Uh, it's blocked it, very well. It's blocked very he well. He could do an intimate fight. He could do that massive one where Chani and him are going back and yeah. forth, which I just loved. so good. He's, like, he's showing you this is how in tune they are now. It's like, well, yeah, I don't need to see them on a date. They're on a date destroying Arkin and ships. Yeah, exactly. And they're like uh, in tune with yeah. each other. He was a little too slow at first, though. Yeah. He'd just be like, reload. He goes, huh? Reload, bro. He's got to learn the ways. Out here. Yeah. But yeah. he learns the ways. Yeah. And, and, and she teaches him, like she said. She and it's beautiful. Um, I will say, speaking on the IMAX in those scenes, there'll be mm. moments, right, where there's this big one, full spoilers at this point, where Chani's able to hit... Um, one of the one of the big ships that's yeah. there. Yeah, the ornithopters. And, right? and she does. Uh, I believe I might have been bigger, but I, I, no, I think it was because that's when uh, uh, he's like jumping from one to one, yeah. beautifully blocked. Yeah, she's able to hit it, and she does this majestic run. Yes. yes. So this it's a really cool Ooh. moment because uh, Denis does a really cool thing where he allows it to sort of just be the sound of her running and kind of like yeah. laughing in joy for a couple seconds before the Ooh. crash. It's and, and with the crash, you get that swell of the it music. Like yeah. And I'm over here going, ah, but it's in one nine. And then mm. it, and I'm like, but if that's the one I was, it's because he goes big when they destroy the entire thing. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm doubting. Why would you doubt? And he does it multiple times <laughs> yeah, he later knows what on. He's doing. There's one with uh, Bautista running away, and there's this really cool shot with stuff's destroying. And I'm like, why not there? It's because the next one, he's got someone dangling there with him. Yeah. And he does it over and over and over again, just these really cool shots. And he reserved the IMAX. I will say that for those traveling out there, like technically we have here being at South by, it, it's still worth it if you know what you're looking for. I felt that with Oppenheimer, some mm-hmm. people were watching and they're like, I didn't really get the point of it. I feel like if you don't know what to look for, mm-hmm. like in food, if you don't have the palate for mm-hmm. it, you don't know what to seek out. But it's like we saw the rhythm of the editing. It goes, ah, boom, boom, boom. And then accentuate the big yeah. one. Yeah. Specifically with the, the switching aspect ratio yes. and the bars yeah. that you sometimes mm-hmm. get. And it's definitely worth it. It yeah. is yeah. worth the experience. Having seen it in multiple formats, y'all know I was ready for that. Yeah. Yeah. And it delivered through and through. Yeah. yeah. So. It's an epic, epic IMAX experience, and especially moments like that, mm-hmm. those yeah. action sequences. And, and I think for me, where whereas I maybe am a little less enamored with the choreography than, uh, than the two of you, the thing that I really? am really enamored with, just, I mean, it's just... I'd say like A minus, right? I, it's I not, do agree with you though yeah. on uh, the Avatar, but uh, Cameron comparisons because people were saying you know those final little fights, yeah. the way that he's able to go big and small. 
Also, the dialogue stuff. Mm-hmm. Cameron's always been big on my movies are really good globally mm-hmm. because of the fact that people could just watch it and be like blue people. It could be muted. Yeah. And he's trying to do the same thing. I don't think it's a negative. I don't think it gets rid of dialogue heavy no, movies. But, no. but he, I get what he was saying. The two of them, Nolan's another one, they realize that ultimately it's the, the image that is the most powerful thing in movies mm-hmm. like this. And that like, mm-hmm. you know, you, you have the dialogue there, but it, it serves to enhance the image yeah. ultimately. Yeah. I think they kind of work together. I feel like, because when you walk in a movie sometimes, you're like, that line hits yeah. so hard. And oh, it's going to be the well, line. And we're talking to people. We, can, we won't yeah. say anything bad about dialogue. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, But I get his perspective, though. And yeah. I hate this, like, apples and oranges I think it's thing. Both. I think you need both. Sure, sure but, but I think it's yeah. also, like... I, agree. I don't know if you can have a great movie with the absence of great visual imagery. No, I fair. do think you could have a great movie with the absence of, of great dialogue. That is true. Yeah. Perfect um, days. Yeah, right, exactly. Well, it exactly. does have great dialogue it, it, when it has it, but it's It doesn't need it. Need There's it parts where it. it's yeah. fully absorbing and you do, don't need to yeah. hear them talk. Primer yeah. looks like crap, though. <laughs> That's a decent movie. Which like one? Primer? Primer? Yeah, Primer is... Primer yeah. look like dookie. Yeah, look, I mean... But it's way more It's rare. all a spectrum, right? Yeah. But it, especially it when we're talking idea. about this action blockbuster film. If, yeah, filmmaking. when it comes to blockbuster filmmaking, yeah. I do think you need the visuals, but like for something like Primer, it's like the idea is so strong yeah. and it's carrying. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and I love, look, I love a bottle film. I love uh, a Mass, the French Crons one, or Artifice <laughs> oh, yeah. Girl, which we got at South by last year. But it, for Dune is something completely different. Yeah. So yeah. you hate the blocking. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. I don't. Um, but the thing that I am more enamored with is just sort of the novel visuals that they're they're putting yeah. on screen. Uh, and you know, I mentioned the ornithopters last time, but there's also the so cool. the the turrets that they use with, that sort of like go in and out and have this kind of buzzy yeah. sound to them. That's really interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, they have these magnetic mines that pop out of the sound sand that I the I've squares. Ne- yeah, or, or they're, they're like hex or like trapezoids or something yeah. like they just that. Just float like a magic carpet yeah. Yeah. to its destination. Yeah. Crazy stuff! I told you immediately. The one that got to me is the people floating. It doesn't. It's oh, not yeah. abnormal. And that happens We've seen like maybe yeah, maybe like ten minutes yeah. into the movie, but it's so smooth. It's, it's just so the way clean. They do what it is is, I think the jetpacks really work. <laughs> I've never looked up and gone, "Oh, this is an effect. Looks cool." Right. I, they were floating. Yeah. It, it's, In my mind, he made them work. Yeah. Yeah, and it's one of those things where it really like the the space adventure ness of it all. It's it's believable in, world, in a yeah. way that doesn't feel. Uh, made up. It, uh, yeah. it feels, actually sure. lived in. Yeah, yeah. not yeah. just for the sake of this. It's like no, this language that they're speaking is through and through. There's, mm-hmm. dude, there are scenes. And the second time I realized, like, they are giving some of the biggest moments to these actors, and it's in a completely yeah. different language, yeah. a made-up language. Yeah, it's yeah. one of the best yeah. movies. It's one of the best <laughs> movies. Yeah, yeah. And you, you have to be a good actor for that too, or just right. Like, You're delivering some of like the biggest dialogue of you coming to or you going through a breakup, and it's in the Fremen language mm-hmm. and. According to Denny, they made sure it was accurate. Even if they got a better performance than another one, they were going to keep doing it again until it was authentic to whatever right dialect. Yeah. So I'm assuming uh, Timmy should have an accent in the <laughs> Fremen language. Yeah, like, like he's, he's like, like he, the English speaker. He tree. Yeah, right, right. That would make yeah. sense. We'll see. I'll have to yeah. learn from and I'll get back to you exactly. on that. Exactly. Um, this whole sequence of Paul learning the ways of the Fremen and sort of being Im- more and more embraced as the potential Lisa Al Gaib or their mm. Messiah. Came down um, the vo- what was it? The voice from outside or the something from outside. Um, that whole sequence mm. sort of culminates with the learning to ride the sandworm. Yeah. yeah. Which is, for my money, probably the most epic piece of filmmaker we're going to get all year, if not in the last couple of years. It's it, pretty wild. I challenge you. Oh. <laughs> The black what, and white jet. You're gonna tell me Fall Guy or something? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what Broad House. No, same movie. Yeah. A black and white. I, honestly, I'd take the same word in sequence over the black and white. Well, well, black and white's next. We'll get to that. But that, oh, I, that blew me away. But I'm not gonna take away from the sequence. No, no, no. Yeah, it, I mean, I think there's just sort of like this anticipation around it, and it really does a great job of building it, building it up and making it uh, sort of like getting you anxious. Mm-hmm. And I, I love just the way they're able to communicate the the scale and force of it, right? Because he's like he's like caught in a sandstorm, mm-hmm. his body is flailing, and there's that moment where he's trying to get up. It's like getting up on water or on water skis or yeah. something yeah. like that, yeah. right? And I think you you don't realize that they've taken the music out for a long yeah. time. It's for yeah. a Just long time. Wind. Yeah. And then when he finally gains his balance and that score hits you and comes back in, that's goosebumps, man. Yeah. Remember in Creed, in the first one where he gets knocked out mm-hmm. oh. and they tie it to the music? Mm-hmm. It's those vibes. Yeah. It, yeah. 
It hit. Definitely, definitely. They also, when the uh, he falls, that scene you're talking about, in IMAX, he looks like he's falling into eternity. He does. Yeah, like, yeah. oh my God. The ratio of it just helps it so much ends. more. It just never ends. It feels like this guy's going down Niagara Falls, but in sand. No, that's... It's, so it's like by the time he gets down there, it's going to be gone. Right? You know? You're at the end of the world. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's at this point where I was starting to think like we've spent a really long time with Paul yeah. and the Fremen and yeah. there's a whole bunch of other celebrities in this movie who I haven't yeah. seen for over an hour. Yeah. And it's right then that they cut they do, to yeah. uh, some Dave Bautista action, <laughs> some Selden Skarsgård action, notably some Austin Butler action. We get really introduced to Fade Rautha yeah. in the uh, triangular Coliseum in, in black and white. Those it, seats suck. <laughs> <laughs> they make no sense. <laughs> Uh, t- talk a little bit about, about that sequence, though. You, that was the standout for you, Art? Easily. Yeah. 100%. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's shot in infrared, first and foremost. Oh. So it is not even in black and white. When they had brought up the idea of making it monochrome, it was Greg Frazier, the cinematographer, was like, no, we got to do it this way. I already had the same lenses he was using for the Batman, which is what oh. gives it this like crazy yeah. look to it. But he specifically said, we'll go all infrared. So you're getting pretty much just the textures of right. that. If there's even more contrast to it. Oh. And I'm like, all right, that's decent. And some people would be like, that's so cool. I'm going to give that a five out of five. But you can't give that a five out of five <laughs> unless there was something with the story. And they incorporate it into the story. It's infrared. Because the sun emits infrared. Yeah. Yeah, and you I, something that I didn't pick up until my second watch through of it is the way that when they get into Bruh. the sun, it transitions into the like you see. You've seen, I'm sure, if you watch the trailer footage, they kind of look like their skins all white. Yeah. And it, they only look that way in the sun. In the yeah. sun, as the Bene Gesserit women are coming out, they're in color. Yeah. And they get draped in it. I was like, yeah. I noticed that the first yeah. time. This is a masterpiece. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's Other wild. movies will just do it to look cool. Yeah. They have a reason they for it. They have a reason for it. So what are you going to give that movie? If you give the last one a five out of five, it's got to be a 20 out of five then at that <laughs> point. They thought of everything. And, and I just appreciate that because there's some parts where I don't know. People were, t- were saying, those worms go way too fast. How are you getting off of them? I'm not even questioning it anymore. Yeah. When he wants to show it to me, he will. And he went on it. record. He yeah. said, in the next one, I'm going to show how they get off. He's already thought it. Hell yeah. Ah, that's, Hell yeah. that's a filmmaker I yeah. like. Uh, what do you think about the introduction to Austin Butler? Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. I think I'm having. I think I have a hard time taking him seriously right now. Which is <laughs> we my just watched Hannah Montana clips. Yeah, literally. I'm just like, look at that. Guy. And I that just, made me take him more seriously. I just didn't know. I just did a Zoe 102 video, and I was like, he, she did date him. That was that. That was that kid. And then just all the like, I had to get trained out of the Elvis voice. I'm just like, and now you're like, he's very menacing, but like. I got, it's just like, it's, this is a later thing, but I'm just like, man, he wants to fuck Paul. He wants to fuck Paul. Like, yeah, I mean, he's got this really like deranged yeah. uh, he is deranged way, way to him. And like, I, I think he does a really good job of making it kind of like almost like animalistic. The yeah. way, the way like he like lizard, sticks out yeah. his tongue in the beginning. Oh, yeah. Like a reptile. Beastly. Yeah. Um, and, and there's that fight sequence. And I, I, something that is really fun about it is, is sort of, uh, the way he's almost like cackling through it, right? Oh, yeah. The, uh, one of the, one of the, yeah, literally drooling over the chance to stab somebody. Yeah. One of the guards steps in to try and like help him and the way he kind of goes like, stay back. Yeah. Those things were creepy too. Yeah, yeah. those were creepy. It, it was Joker-esque delivery, but really what the delivery was, which is which is crazy and what impressed me is like, he got the Stellan Skarsgård accent. He did, he did. Don't they always complain about people like, oh, don't look back, don't watch the other performer, don't want, mm-hmm. He did it, and uh, it excelled. Yeah, yeah. it made so, it seem more like their family. I don't know what they're telling you in film school, but do the opposite, because <laughs> that man knocked it out. I, I heard that, too, that he had gone through all of his young performer, uh, performances, and that uh, when Stellan was there, he's like, he thought it was an echo. <laughs> <laughs> he got wild. it down perfectly. I thought he looked like a mini Skarsgård, and then yeah, I remembered yeah. it's Papa Skarsgård yeah. there. He had a little bit of uh, Pennywise in there. Oh, yeah. Mm. yeah. Especially the way that they put the bald cap on it, which still blows my mind. We're talking makeups already, bro. Honestly, the second viewing, when you were asking me about the Oscars, the first rundown, the first time we, we talked about it, I was going through them live. I'm like, no, it's five out of five editing. This is five out of five. Yeah. I feel Makeup. like it's, it's only his eyebrows where I'm like. They go. Yeah, because they go all the way up to here with the yeah. bald cap. And I was trying to. What would you notice? That it, it's way too prominent uh-huh. compared to like other people. I find like even compared to like Batista and stuff or whatever. I think it's just the oh, way it's like his it looks shaped. like you can tell that yeah, something's it's covering on eyebrows. top of his stuff. I think it was yeah. he didn't want to shave it because of the bike riders. Yeah. yeah. 
but See, it's, it's like, still better. So than I would never, Superman's. I wouldn't ever shave my eyebrows because I've seen people who do that and like they just don't grow back. I'm like, I ain't doing that. <laughs> yeah, I thought I wouldn't do that. I would just bit. maybe thin them out a little bit and then do it. But <laughs> his look was crazy. Yeah, yeah like, it was crazy. But it added to it. It made like a really harsh. No, that's the thing. I, shadow yeah, over his. Yeah. yeah. And it gives him more of like a weird like a mega headshot. mind. There's yeah, this mega one mind, shot yeah. where he goes into the uncle and the uncle's like, I'm gonna promise you something. He goes. Promise mm-hmm. me what? His head's like taking up yeah. the whole frame. Yeah. yeah. If you're sitting in the first row for IMAX, that's got to be the funniest image. The way that they did the Oppenheimer ones yeah. and the Timmy ones. He, yeah, he looks pretty goofy, but at the same time menacing. He's like a. They're technically all children. It's that Game of Thrones uh, take where you were following kids. Yeah. In the book, but then for the movie, they got to be a little bit older. That scene is his birthday party where he becomes a man. Right. Yeah. It's his coming of age. Yeah. Wild. Weird. <laughs> and then he confronts a uh, naked floating Stellan Scar, or maybe that's Bautista who actually confronts the naked floating. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. But wh- why? Why is Baron the only one who floats? I think it's it's because the Lego set has him floating. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen it. It's the craziest Lego set. It's like it's a bunch of Legos just to have him floating around. It's the biggest thing I've seen. Nope. I'm willing to get it. Um, and I think they reverse engineered it because they needed that. Right. Yeah. But it could just be because he like he sits in oil. Yeah, yeah, and he's got that like medical thing that looks like he's attached to. Yeah, wasn't that... the oil because of what when he almost died in the first one? Wasn't that why he was in the oil? <sighs> Maybe. Did they yeah. put him in the oil That's after right. they poisoned him? They did do that. He might have been in there in the because in the I first one, I think he was before. He's that. sitting in something when he does that like apocalypse now homage yeah. mm-hmm. oh, yeah. um i'm assuming it's just because he's got the better tech i think it's because he's too lazy to walk around the, so i just don't think his legs maybe that's anymore. just the benefits yeah. of being the leader that too because yeah. yeah. you hear it he's got that stuff in his back mm-hmm. that like yeah it sounds like godzilla when they chop it off later on you see yeah. he can't do he can't, he can't be do exactly yeah, he's yeah. Nothing i just about assume a lot of bad things happen to this man and this is all the <laughs> stuff that they have to just like keep him like yeah. alive bro I have heard what he's supposed to be. Yeah, he is. He is not the guy. A lot of people have been, you know, doing the memes of like, oh, I just want to be like him and chill. No. Why would anybody want to be him? His background was a, a, a lot of abuse, a lot of younger kids. And uh, I guess just to, to give a little tidbit to what we're going to break into, um, he is gay in the book. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The child that gets revealed was forced upon him, which is this weird thing of like... Not that it should happen to you, but damn, you were doing that to a lot of other people. Right. Yeah. It's it's like he was played as well, but mm-hmm. he's just a sicko. Yeah. There's yeah. so much in this movie where you look at him and you're like, you're, you're just a slimy person oh, yeah. who shouldn't have made it this far. And it's almost yeah. like he knows how far he's going to make it and he's just in it for the ride as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, they're, they're frequently performance. Uh, mm-hmm. cutting to him just as you hear the screams of like women he's yeah. killed casually. And that shot take forever. Is it yeah. forever it's like, did you see it? And, the... and if you didn't see it... <clears throat> It's going to be four seconds. Yeah, I counted it. You got to account for it. That's a lot. Yeah, he it wants you to reckon with it. it. Hey, Bautista didn't even want to go in that shit. No, he's kind of like... <laughs> but no, I, I truly think Stellan, uh, Stellan's performance is underrated. Yeah. Because yeah. we've been focused on so much other stuff. Yeah. I also really like Bautista. Yeah, there's, this is around the time where we get the scene where Bautista leads a bunch of the Fremen into conflict and starts shouting and yeah. killing helicopter pilots. Yeah. And a good comparison is that like he'll smack a lot of people, right? Yeah. But what's his name goes straight to killing. Yeah. yeah. There's that one guy he's yelling the entire time. Yeah. I think he hits him or whatever else. And it isn't until his brother comes in that he just kills him. Yeah. Right. I want to say that was a different guy. I want to say the guy he smashed did die. Oh, Harkonnen. Because he just kind of kept I'm going sorry. like, yeah, yeah. he smashed he him so kept... much. And then it was like a different guy the second time. And okay. then that guy got killed on the third time. <laughs> just endless minions, I guess, if you're a Harkonnen. <laughs> yeah, don't be a Harkonnen advisor. <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, was the whole sand swept action scene was top of the film on top two of them or just Which another one? one the the one where they're kind of like emerging from the sand and it's taking so out good. some of the Harkonnens one by it's one so good. and then it's they so retreat that, 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 that to me was one of the pretty uh, those scenes are one of the sick. better choreographed scenes in awesome. the film uh. even the little like uh, the one where the mouse comes up to it yeah. what they breathe oh I love that like, again just the tech in here yeah. it's like it's like it's both the, very advanced but then also like that's just like mesh on a thing going like right. so it's right? like basic but then so advanced and like it's, it's again like talking about basic but Advance like <laughs> the idea of just con- being concealed in the sand and yeah. emerging to in the full on sprint. Cool. Yeah. It just looks dope, it's and I so haven't good. seen it. Ever. Exactly. Yeah. Ever. That's Ever. what's cool about it. I, I thought when they did the the, the the what's it called the shields, mm. they've been doing a good job with that. They bring it very sparingly mm-hmm. in this one, but there's something about just you know for a second <laughs> you're just covered in this mist of sand. Yeah. That looks it looks awesome. It looks yeah. like when Batman disappears. Yeah. It's really cool. This is also around the time where we cut back to the Emperor and Florence Pugh, and yeah. uh, they're discussing that Paul might be alive and mm-hmm. the potential consequences this have. I was also just struck struck by the way that 
cutting to a place with greenery, mm. uh, a place with vegetation. Yeah. It, it kind of like jars you for yeah. a second. And, and I think it does a really good job of also serving as a contrast because so much of this movie is the, the Fremen and their struggles in the desert and being and the discussions about being led to the green paradise and mm -hmm. stuff like yeah. that. And you get to see that like, there is this sort of like greener pasture kind of literally mm -hmm. uh, that we may be visiting not so far in the future. Yeah. Um, we go back to the Fremen with the scene where they uh, encounter scavenger Josh Brolin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was like, uh, another pretty dope action sequence. Uh, this is one of the thing. This is one of the parts that did briefly take, mm -hmm. briefly take me out because He's they're sitting around and Josh Brolin says like, oh, I've heard stories of Muhadib. And it's like, was this not just like 10 minutes ago in the movie? Is He's already becoming this like renowned figure. And I they're think there's certain, yeah, there's certain moments where you feel them kind of like yada yada little elements of the plot, mm -hmm. maybe little time jumps that are unexplained that don't like make the movie not work. That just no. maybe jarred me. Yeah. Especially on my first watch through less so on my second. Because it's only nine. It's not even nine months. She hasn't had the baby. Yeah. Right. So but it's, it's like, like close. Yeah, because he wakes up at one point and Chani's like, oh, you haven't had that dream in a while. Yeah. In a while? Like, yeah. Right. What is a while? Exactly. So I guess it's been a couple of months. Something I'm like that. I'm going to say it's been like there. five. Based on how pregnant she looked, I'm saying like five, six. Maybe maybe even like seven. Which is enough for them to become close. Yeah. Is it enough for where to have spread all over... If right, that, like well, maybe, I guess. But it, if it's war and there's only like certain sects of people, and everyone's been it, waiting for this prophecy, and it's gonna spread fast. If there's only like yeah. three groups of people, yeah. Right. But if yeah. it's if it's been months, it makes sense in the <laughs> mm -hmm. context of the movie. It's like they 10, do a quick minutes, montage so little, immediately. Yeah, they, yeah. And I guess you have to sacrifice something, and it looks cool knowing that mm -hmm. that the montage is going through a lot. I'm yeah. like, all right, that's decent. I can see how they got yeah, together. Because it's like if it's been months, damn, of this guy hour, though. <laughs> just taking out every yeah. vessel, like just destroying all of these different places you're gonna hear like most wanted well, especially sure. where brolin's a scavenger he's like why are they just abandoning the all smugglers? these places yeah. smugglers it's like oh it's because we were they're here and like yeah some guy is kind of going yeah. through and like they just seem to know where we're gonna be so then i that's... thought he switched sides and i was really heartbroken so when um, i found out he was just a criminal yeah like, <laughs> oh, <right>. oh. <laughs> so much <laughs> big yeah. relief big relief yeah. so i could just see why he would have heard it because it's like why do they keep abandoning all these places and letting us get in and it's like oh it's because like there's this guy because yeah. he's they're starting the legend of him mm -hmm. he had a really cool scene too walking against the explosion in the background oh, mm -hmm. just love them really good shots do you like his little song Josh Brolin's really guitar picking <laughs> yeah I heard he doesn't play it because he sucks at it oh, so no. it's technically he's fingering it but it's Hans Zimmer <laughs> <laughs> His lyrics were dumb, bro. Very dumb. So dumb. Yeah. I'm not surprised. You said he had a co-handed writing it. I'm not surprised having yeah. read some of his poetry. Are you gonna get that poetry book? <laughs> oh man, that thing is uncomfortable. That is like I, an exhibit I, one, Your Honor, in the sexual yes. harassment case against Mr. The pictures Brown. from Greg, fantastic. Yeah, they gotta be tainted. Was that graffiti <laughs> of verses? I don't know about. It. I've been seeing some people buy the book, but. I mean, we could do a live reading of some of the poetry yeah, on a future episode. I think it would be pretty cool. I'll let you take them, especially the ones on Timmy. <laughs> some weird stuff. But, um, it's some weird, yeah. It works for the movie because, yeah. obviously, Denny knew how to how to adjust it. Uh, I thought that was pretty cool, but I really liked the callback when he was like, your feet. I, I know the pattern of your feet. Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot that, of yeah. callbacks to his teachers. I think there's a lot of callbacks to Duncan, who he honors, yeah. with the chip and shatter, yeah. his relationship with the Fremen, a lot from his teacher in Gurney. Um, even with talks about his dad a lot fight. with the ring yeah, the and the, the, yeah, the signet. Yeah, let's the talk signet. about that yeah. right there. The even, yeah, something like that. Yeah, um, the just the bits of him taking it off so he can find his own way, and you compare that to the conversation that he had with his dad about being his own man. Yeah. And then when he puts, puts it, it back, back on, mm. a, a whole mini work. arc right there. Yeah, Good work. Yeah, but uh, character yeah. development. Gurney, uh, they join forces. I I like that first part where he's talking about, bro. You got how many people? What's the problem? And he goes, these used to be friends. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, I what's the problem, bro? <laughs> it's real it's really big when you're finished saving the world energy. Yeah. yeah. There's this one point where he tells his mom, he's like, Oh, you just need to grow up. And he goes, You need to grow up, kid. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're, you're in love over there? That's cool. And he's like yelling out, You're a fake mom. Yeah, yeah. you're fake. It's it's just some real domestic stuff. Even with Chani, yeah. she's arguing with her mother in law. This yeah. is monster in law up in space. That's right. all yeah. that's happening here. Yeah. Cause they're in this big context of, you know, ruling the world through this prophecy that they've Made everybody believe. Yeah. Um, I like how Gurney fall, falls for the prophecy because he sees the good in it. He's like a person who knows how to use religion even if he's not religious. Yeah. yeah. He likes the good soldiers that it makes out of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was like, now they have a unified person to fight behind and exactly. for. You know, I heard that the Spartans 
<laughs> Let, let's We're not very get into unified. Snyder territory. <laughs> very unified. Uh, but yeah, so this is the section of the movie where Paul is starting to really um, wrestle with the 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 legacy or the the story, the prophecy. Acting. Some actual acting in Big Plus. Big yeah, Plus no, th- this is where it, the movie sort of like rests on Timmy's shoulders mm-hmm. and that the, the struggle to navigate like your destiny versus what you think is right versus yeah. what Knowing everybody's that telling you is right. It's not real. Yeah, like, exactly. You know? Compromise where you can, compromise where whatever the Captain America line was. Because then he realized oh, at yeah. a certain point an attack happens. Mm-hmm. He is able to find his military stuff, which I think is a very interesting point. Yeah, the atomics. That they all find it. The he atomics. finds his atomics, a- and they realize firepower. Yeah. yeah, and that's another moment you were talking about how it is supposed to be like er- in the future, right? and that that the atomics make us feel or er- bring us back to Oppenheimer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Yeah. yeah. Some crazy stuff. Uh, but yeah, they they f- discover the atomics and they have this ability to maybe level the playing field or mm-hmm. potentially destroy the the spice and control over spices, control yeah. power. Um, so this sort of like is a big moment of escalation of the the war between the Harkonnens and the Emperor and the uh, Fremen. Biden um, now has his stuff. He's even crazier uh, than his brother was. Yeah. yeah. So his brother licking his own boot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is yeah. another moment where I was like, oh, that was sudden when they're just outside of uh, Arakeen and are it's just pummeling it with artillery. Yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, you couldn't have done that like th- three tries ago. Yeah. Or, yeah. I don't know. So at that point, it's like the way that they were delegating down. What's his name was failing a lot. He comes in and he goes, okay, we're going to go full firepower. Ralph and they start destroying things. By the time that they destroy the place that we got to see them in at the beginning, the mm-hmm. siege is what it was called. Yeah. When they had all like the water of souls. The water, which yeah. we didn't talk about. Another really cool, cool yeah, moment. Really creepy part. Yeah. When that gets destroyed, I think that's when Paul realized like, oh, it's not all fun and games. Yeah. I need to make a compromise. And if this is the compromise, the thing I just don't like, yeah. if I can do it and it'll stop my girl from like crying, mm-hmm. yeah. that's when he's willing to do it. Yeah. yeah. And some of that journey, it, I think, is also more clear to me on a, on a rewatch. That this is all; these are all the things that are leading to Paul's decision to sort of like, yeah. you know, break try. His, but a great, break his conviction. Yeah, yeah. exactly. He breaks his yeah. conviction, and, and it, the first it, half did a great job at keeping his conviction. Because yes. if you don't believe that, you're like, oh, it's just going through the motions. And on a second watch, yeah. you go, no, you made sure that he was committed that first time around. Then that happens. And then it's like no one else is stepping up because they think I'm the guy. So do I yeah. have to be the guy? Right, right. And then he gets prodded in that direction yep. yeah uh so. there's the scene with lady jessica where she goes ahead to the south mm-hmm. where all the religious fanatics I'm are at you, and they uh have the they extract the uh, water of life from the baby sandworm yeah. awesome scene really really well uh choreographed and executed and just uh, that whole like performance of it how they're able to make it feel like so ritualistic uh just one of those things that r- makes it feel like a really full tragedy world. Macbeth. yeah yeah right that one uh Catherine Hunter who- moment yeah on the money. That's what I felt there too. I was yeah, like, I wish I remember that actress's name, but yeah. uh, she, she's so good there. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, so he uh, ultimately goes to the South as well, despite having those premonitions of uh, billions of dead billions people of dead that people. he are part of the reason he's trying to avoid this prophecy. Yeah. Um, and he uh, takes the water of life, which yeah. uh, I think also leads to that really interesting moment where we, it's a test for Chani too, yeah. because he, uh, his life, his vitals go low and she has to sort of make this sacrifice to her own uh, con- conviction. Speaking of yeah. sacrificing fin- conviction, what she believes in order to try and help somebody she loves. She's yeah. come to love. Um, I didn't, I didn't pick up the first time through that her, uh, Fremen name was Desert Spring yeah. and that that's part of the prophecy. Yeah. Shout out to uh, the first Pokemon movie, This World Moves <laughs> Into Ash. That's what I thought of. <laughs> this is so good. Good call. Good yeah. yeah. Uh, what did you think of that moment? She was used. She was used, yeah. Because yeah. she got voice, yeah. too. She got voice. Yeah. yeah. That's the bit of it. It, that it did not come from her. Timmy got to choose it, but she did not. She was mm-hmm. used completely in it. First and foremost, I just love the idea of like you taking this thing that kills you and you're reborn as the Messiah over all these people mm. that you have to lead. And your girl slaps you in the face of all your new <laughs> I disciples. I love it. It was so good. I'm telling you, I'm like, imagine Jesus Christ walking to the cross and Mary Magdalene's like, you forgot the dishes. <laughs> like, <laughs> it seems like the most minuscule thing, but yeah. to her, it's everything. Yeah. I, that book that I had picked up, I told you that, you know, he had told his wife that the Fremen women use blue to I, signify yeah. when they're in love. And I'm yeah. like, oh, yeah. So this girl was head over heels. She yeah. she threw away everything she thought. Cause 
that's how much in love she was. Yeah. Even her best friend, who I thought was a great character, I don't know the actress's name, the yes. one who's making fun of him all the time. Yeah, yeah I thought she the was one, really good. Yeah, who's always giving him a hard time until he's like, yeah, I lost my own. Ooh, trauma Ooh. bonding. Right. <laughs> when she goes, she went hard. And and when F- Fade, Fade? Fade rather. The way she kills him? Yeah. Like, oh, I got the info I need. This is just the fun part? That's a sicko. Yeah. yeah. That is oh, a yeah. sicko. Oh, yeah. But again, she's lost, and I feel Chani holds that. Chani fell so in love with a guy, she feels the guilt of it all. Yeah. And then at the end, she feels used. Yeah. Uh, and this all leads to that moment with the, uh, it's a council of leaders or whatever yeah. it is, with the, yep. the millions of Fremen uh, observing, and uh, Paul sort of taking up his mantle and t- taking Coach control status. of the room. Yeah. And that walk is crazy. I, I think this is the apex of Timmy's career so far. Timmy Chalamet, just it, he's done some really incredible acting and in some really great movies. I did not know he was capable of like That's a St. Crispin's Day yeah. kind of, you know, brave heart moment, yeah. right? And it's scary. You think they altered his voice? Ooh. And does that affect it? If he's on the stick? <laughs> I don't I, think so. I I hope not. I don't know, but, but don't it know. wouldn't bother me either, just because okay. those are the tools of filmmaking. Yeah. Well, I thought he, he wherever he went, yeah, was crazy. But this is yeah. the scene we were explaining is on a completely made up language. Yeah. And I'm watching it the second time, going, wait, the whole scene that everyone's quoting is in a completely different language, and we have issues doing this with other movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This must be a master filmmaker if everyone's looking the opposite way. Yeah. yeah absolutely demolished it then he comes in in english and that's when you get that very deep voice that i never thought he was he had yeah he must have been smoking a pack of lucky strikes <laughs> again <laughs> we get the title drop doom and then yeah, what do you think of that i mean i think if you're gonna save a title drop doing it for the the sort of like character development climax is a perfect moment to drop it yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, do you prefer this one or the first one when i, I think was... i prefer this one really yeah yeah <sighs> i'm telling you that floating bear and got me though my doom. Yeah. I, I like that one a little bit more. Yeah. Um, do you think he played him like magically? He knew? Or do you think him and Lady Jessica scoped out this guy and did that old like early 1900s church stuff? Tell him. The guy in the second <laughs> row that his grandmother has cancer. I don't know. I almost feel like this. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I just at that point, I actually feel like Paul believes it too. Uh-huh. Like, yeah. I think Paul is sucking the farts now too. And he's like, I am actually... He's got high on his own supply, and it's like it literally. It I mean, could just be that you already knew it. I, I feel like, especially knowing that the plan well, is called Dune, I feel like yeah. some of his stuff you already knew. Knew because of yeah, like, yeah. Because well, he yeah, does have books. my book said mm, he does have that like transcendental psychedelic mm. experience. You know, he. That's the weird yeah. thing in here. We also are dealing with powers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah like powers. I mean, the, I think the book in some ways is supposed to be like about mushrooms and, and <laughs> drugs. Yeah. It's got to be because at this point it can't be a parallel he- to our world. Cause no. if I'm turning water into <laughs> wine right in front of you guys, I think we, some of us are going to church tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it is weird in this world where you do have these mystical, magical things yeah. happening. He yeah. can see multiple futures. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And I think he uses that to his advantage because I think he cheats at the end. Should we get well? Should we get to the final battle first because that's yep. uh, mm-hmm. kind of another uh, really epic moment. Uh, he divides the troops and they launch one. I believe launched one of the atomics. They it did. Looked, yeah. right? Oh hell yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing yeah. Was massive. Yeah. Um, and the, this is also the moment where we get the sandworms yeah. riding into battle. Yeah. Caitlin was disappointed that they went in a straight line. <laughs> she wanted more like more navigation, oh, the, a little the, more like steering a sail, like sailboat. Jurassic Park. Yeah, like yeah. one over here and then one this way. That would yeah. be crazy. That's for the next battle. <laughs> yeah. This was Napoleon's Waterloo. You got to build to yeah, it. It's not his Waterloo yeah. yet. They I weren't should trying say. to go for like the stealth. They were trying to go like these are three things coming yeah. right at you right. head on. They boom, don't need to boom, deal with boom. stealth. It's actually pretty crazy. Yeah, they had yeah. all power. That desert power that his dad that he was talking about. No, it it worked wonders for me, especially because uh, just the designs between the two of them, the Sardaukar, mm. to Timmy coming in with that like Atreides. Um, revamped logo Mm -hmm. it was fire yeah and even the way that it just sort of the first sandworm emerges from the cloud of sand is so epic yeah uh, really really does get uh, it just awes you I think Um, plus it's Oppenheimer and sandworms Mm -hmm. the bomb you wanted Mm -hmm. and sandworms (laughs) yeah in IMAX yeah Uh, there's that long extended shot of Zendaya Going, plowing through some soldiers. Now, I will say, so good. I had told you the, the first time around that I had the theory that it was reminiscent of the one the you see in the first movie, yes. where he flips into the mask. That yeah. can still happen in the future. It can. But, but it that one same. was also done in 143. Zendaya's is not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
So if we're talking about story beats and rhythm and editing, maybe that has something to say about something that hers didn't go the full route of it. Um, but I did see it as a parallel that he's like, I'm going to fight with you. But my man's doing this crazy sick walk, yeah, but he's just like it. walking in the desert, yeah. whereas everyone else is fighting. Yeah. Uh, and then yeah. once it's done, he just he walks up there um, when they enter that 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 floating healing thing, which one, it looked like that thing from Nope. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know if there's just like a IMAX Illuminati crew that's like, we need this symbol in all of our IMAX movies, but it looked crazy the way they docked there. Mm. I know they got that theory that the uh, pyramids are for like spaceships to land on. <laughs> Man, I was watching that and I'm like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. They're, they're onto something here. They're onto something. The way that uh, they're all scared that someone's coming in, right? I don't mm. know if you want to speak, build up the emperor a bit. Well, no, yeah. They, they, the battle sort of like progresses into like whatever the chambers they have yeah. where the emperor are is and his forces like try to stop them. I thought it was really cool the way they like uh, gathered in the, in the side yeah. and stuff like that. When um, they go out. Yeah. And then Timmy just walks in. Yeah. To like not even bother yeah. with yeah. the violence. Mm -hmm. So good. Dope so stuff. good. And the way he just sort of walks up to Baron and, and, yeah. Uh, slices him down. This man just uh, killed his grandpa in front of everybody. Yeah, oh, yeah. how you doing? That's another thing yeah. we didn't mention that uh, we find out at some point yeah. or during Timmy's whole psychedelic sequence. Right before. Two yeah. things we didn't mention. Because yeah. he's like, first, you didn't tell me. Yeah. <laughs> first of all, that uh, we find out Jessica is the daughter of Baron Harkonnen. Yep. Therefore, Timmy is the grandfather or grandson, grandson and part of the Harkonnen family while also being a Atreides. Uh, but also that the unborn fetus and voice of the fetus is Anya Taylor-Joy. Taylor -Joy. We're getting uh, flex. Queen's Gambit into the future of uh, this yeah. series. I mean, yeah, the, we've, I said it, I think we've said this basically every opportunity we've had with Dune, but I think this is going to be, we're going to look back on this as one of the all-timer casts, especially oh, yeah. getting these people at this point in their In career. their careers, yeah. Yeah, yeah for so sure. I think we're really like, I think it's, I've been telling you, it's like Lord of the Rings, but they got the Hobbit already yeah. down. Yeah, right. yeah. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. that. That's not coming as an afterthought. He's ready to pass a baton if need be, but he's setting up the actors now because her story goes way yeah. further down the line. I'm it's, surprised they didn't go with the younger actors, honestly. They needed a Latina because, you know, the, the dad. <laughs> Wait, she, she, she doesn't like that. She doesn't like that. She, she knows what she is in Argentina. She doesn't like that. So uh, <laughs> I, I think it was really good casting on her end. But yeah. I also think yeah. that one part where they're realizing about the Harkonnens, there's a, yeah. one line where he goes, uh, that's how we'll survive as Harkonnens. Mm -hmm. But a line in the first is that if as long as Harkonnens are alive, we'll always be at war. You'll yeah. always be at war. You're a Harkonnen. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Just, uh, the way it works. All in one room, Timmy conf confronts, or uh, Paul confronts uh, the Emperor about his manipulation and betrayal, betrayals, um, and challenges him, challenges his throne, yeah. uh, which lo which uh, then Fade uses as an opportunity to offer himself up as his sword, and we get the final climactic fight. Th these movies have both come down to one-on-one -on -one knife yeah. fights. Yeah, that's raw. Yeah. I love it. I love it too. This one it. definitely feels more like a climax than it did in the last one. It does, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the last one kind of felt like a, it could have been a midway point in yeah. the movie. It makes sense when you like know the sort of arc of the story. Yeah. But yeah, it, it didn't feel quite as much of a high as this moment. Like this, you go into it knowing this is kind of the hard. final fight. Mm -hmm. Um what do you think of the sequence? What do you think of the fight scene? Really good, really brutal. Like you could feel yeah. the brutality, the urgency, how fast it was. Yeah, yeah it was crazy. I something that bothers me, I think, a lot with fight scenes is when you can kind of see them getting into position, and I don't think you see that at all with this. No, yeah. It's a very, very kind of this looked like natural. Hurt, uh, I like the the skyfall silhouetting of it. Yes. I think that allows you to see them like yeah. really make contact with each other, mm -hmm. and then just they will do a couple of punches before a cut. Mm -hmm. This man was flipping. Mm -hmm. yeah. They were oh, headbutting. Man. Sick. I, I, yeah, there was behind the scenes talk that Christopher Walken was like, "Why are they so close?" And yeah. nobody realized like they were they were training for this yeah. in front of everybody. I think that's why it works so well. Mm. They weren't like green screening them in. Yeah, they were performing this mm -hmm. in yeah. front of everybody, and that's why it feels so visceral. Also, it doesn't good. feel like pieced together bits. Like yeah. You know, maybe like a funeral to a really big character that died right, and right. you see them and they're all clearly stitched there. Yeah. No, this was a perfect hand-to-hand -hand combat. And um, I think what he does really good is that in superhero movies, you know, uh, Spider-Man in particular, mm. you need him to like save individual people to really showcase right. the type of hero that he is. Yeah. Then he does the opposite with war where he's showing you individual deaths like as like 
intimate as it can be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that makes the grand scale of that explosion even nastier because it's like, dude, how many people died there? Yeah, cool. Now let me show you what it's like to Individual stab the grandpa yeah. and to stab this person. And it's like all of these kills are very brutal and it shows how it changes him. Because yeah. he, he had zero bodies at the end of the first one. Then it's Jameis. I don't even yeah. know how many, right? It was a montage. Yeah. You don't even know. So the yeah. races, yeah. He walks in bloody, bro. Mm-hmm. Couldn't even wash his face. <laughs> this is also another moment where I think Villeneuve smartly uh, eschews any music. It's just the sound of them yeah. fighting. Yes. And, and uh, that, it kind of adds to the tension. You're just, it doesn't really, leave your brain. Yeah, you like, really, no, you really no don't talking. know what's going to happen. It feels very yeah. fraught. Yeah, I don't think people, well, maybe they do, but I feel like sometimes people forget how much music in a scene affects what you know is going to come, yes. what's going to happen. It can be used to fake you out, but yeah. when the absence is there, then it's like anything's on the table. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so they use that really well. Uh, Fade gets a stab in, but yeah. he does not get the final blow. Do you think he went down too easy? No, He I wasn't a, a great fighter. He needed to get his opponents drugged up before they fought in the Coliseum. Timmy so. cheated. Yeah. Oh, Timmy cheated. How many knives were there? I thought it was two. Right? It's a one-on-one fight. Yeah. Check the tape again. Wait, are you sure? Because I you think sure? there's the one in the, the, one in the he, stomach, the one in his shoulder. Yeah. yeah. The one in his shoulder. And he pulls. Then he's got this one right here. Yeah. So he lets that he one hit his, the one stomach, out of his stomach. And he pulls and, the one out of his shoulder to stab him. So at the end, it's just the one that's here. He pulled the one out of his one? stomach. Yeah. He pulled the one out of his stomach. Basically, he was stabbed there. here. Then he has the knife coming at him and he deflects it into his shoulder and then while he's too busy following through that way, Timmy grabs the one that was in yeah. his and stabs him because that's gone. That's gone after, I swear to God. I think yeah. he had Jameis's knife in no, there. No, no, no. He did not. He did not. I don't trust him. No, he, he was, didn't. No, he lost he, my faith. He pulled. Him and Lady Jessica need to get evicted. No, it's because James, his other guy took his knife mid-fight. So at one point, he was getting attacked by Jameis with his own knife and he didn't have one. He had to go get it. We're going to have to review the tape. I Maybe there's another pen going on. No, I swear to God. Oh, because I, I, I had a moment. I was like, what this happened to like the a... knife? And then he turns around and other dude has his knife because you can tell it's wavy. And they make a point of showing you they're different knives. They're very different style knives. So when he's holding it up, you're like, oh shit, he's got his knife now. Where's the, where's the other one? It's like Where'd the second go? shooter theory. Yeah. It's like, where'd you go? And then I, I looked and it's like, yeah, so he's stabbed. He comes at him. He's holding this with his hand like this. Yeah. Let's it deflect. So then while he's following through here into Timmy's shoulder, Timmy's other hand yeah. grabs that one and stabs him with it. Because when it's done, the one in his stomach is gone. Yeah, yeah. He only pulls this one out. Swear to God. I was like very, very focused <laughs> on that moment. Because Amanda I was knows all, her way around a knife fight. There was like, I do. There was like a whole thing where I was like, that's, that's, She's there's a different knife. <laughs> It's like, you guys are already dead. You just don't know it yet. He's going to move a certain way. I heard he's going to pop. Uh, I still think he's a lying, thieving adulterer at heart. I think he's a cheater. He's he knew a, what was happening. He's, he's a Harkonnen and, and a, he's a Ben and Jesuit. And, not even, and a rebellious... You ever talk to your father-in-law like that? <laughs> no. Give me your head and your daughter's hand? <laughs> your daughter's hand? <laughs> Respectfully. Respectfully. <laughs> no, David and I are cool. Oh, we're not like that. <laughs> Insane way yeah. to meet. Uh, but yeah, so Timmy wins the fight yeah. and... Ascends to the emperorship, although he uh, is challenged by the other great houses, so it's not going to be a, a no, clean like ascension to power. But the other notable thing here is that he uh, he sort of negotiates for uh, the emperor's daughter's hand yeah. for to marry Florence Pugh yeah. in front, right in front of Chani. Right after he was all like, "I will love you until the day I yeah. die," and I was like, "He's gonna make a play at her. He's They're gonna breathing. get hooked up." After she brought him back to life. <laughs> after she brought him back to life. Because, you know, politics matter more. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, just a, a brutal betrayal. How he can do Zendaya like that, I don't know. Politics? It's for Florence. <laughs> it's for Florence. It's, it's for Florence. I mean, it's, it's, a, no. it's a pretty... pretty. It's a political thing. Like, that kind of stuff happens so yeah. much in those... Th- people marry yeah. for status all the time. And she knew But it, it was coming. her one... She did. She literally says She's it. She's smart, it's all yeah. like, you're not, how could you be with me to the end? Yeah. But that was when he was still like, oh, well, I'm not going to be this thing you think I'm going to be. Uh-huh. Yeah. But she's like, everyone else thinks you're that thing. Eventually, yeah. you're going to be the thing, whether you want to be or well, not. It's that whiplash mentality. He ends up leaving the people that he loves in order to become this great, destined whatever. That's and he kill does it in billions of people. And to him, that that's the whatever worthy way. I like that it's a flip on the true love story. They did yeah. the whole ritual, what would be a kiss, ends up being her tear. And it's the most perverse way of it it's yeah. the complete opposite that true love ceremony is what ruins their relationship yeah doesn't create it yeah and then like you're saying the political side of it with uh, uh florence Pugh. yeah 
you follow her throughout the whole movie this woman yeah. knew everything, everything. She's, she's just questioning stuff yeah to the Ben and Jesuit mother yeah and the Reverend mother's like yeah you already got that right uh no we're on to the next thing yeah she's clearly like the best student that she's had supposed to be the next up to have the next movie be a love triangle between Zendaya yeah Timothy Chalamet <laughs> and Florence Pugh, Pugh and also asking for money and also sister Anya Taylor Joy yeah, and sister Anya, Anya Taylor Joy. Joy. There's Ridiculous. some, some intimacy going on there too. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah it's. I don't know if this is like a Princess Leia situation. Well, like she was saying, she was <laughs> like she was saying also cousin. <laughs> yeah, so weird. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm like he even. I feel like first he wanted to fuck Timmy, then he found out that Timmy was his cousin. Wanted it even more. <laughs> it's like I'm gonna stab him so good. I forgot to to. Uh, give you the chance to talk about the moment when Timmy ta- uh, stabs Stellan and Austin Butler looks like he really wants to fuck him. Yeah, no, it is. It's like it happens and he's like, oh. Yeah. Oh, it's like, I'm sad, but I'm so turned on. Oh, yeah. Such a formidable adversary. Like, oh. This is so intimate. <laughs> All of the reaction shots were really good. Yeah. yeah. I also forgot to mention one of my favorite moments in this movie is when Timmy uses the voice yeah. on Charlotte Rampling yeah. and she it's goes, Abomination. Abomination. <laughs> She's, she's kind of amazing in this Yeah, film. she is. Is she saying abomination to Timmy? I th- or to the baby? Or to the baby using Timmy? Oh. oh. I mean, that, that's what I mean. I don't know. That's that's deeper than I'm going with. There's a baby. lot going on here. Yeah. It's an abomination either way. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, basically where we're left is with uh, Paul now sort of like asserting his claim to the emperorship yeah. in charge of the potentially millions of Fremen and promising to lead them to the green paradise. We see Stilgar getting onto the, the warships and they're leaving Arrakis. Yeah. Uh, so we're going, you know, multi-planetary in the future, yeah. but not all of us are leaving Arrakis. I thought it was a really interesting choice on Villeneuve's part. We end the story following Chani, following Zendaya mm-hmm. through the desert yeah. uh, as she calls a sandworm and gets ready to ride it. And like that, that whole shot that we end with focused on Zendaya's face is so powerful. Like yeah. her, her expressions are just such a special effect, yeah. like so much more that powerful than most things that you could put on yeah. screen. Yeah. And it, it's a true movie star moment that to yeah. hold on her there. Um, I don't know what, what it, what it means to either of you, what you feel like we're in store for. If you are, are satisfied with the note they left us on and w- what you're anticipating in the future. What, what were your Ooh. thoughts? You actually, you you had your first watch through more recently than I us. I did, yeah. So what was your immediate thoughts as uh, we rolled credits on Dune Part 2? Um, it went in the direction I assumed it was gonna, gonna, gonna go in the last one, but in a very different way. Mm. Like I kinda thought, I didn't like, I think it's maybe just because he's so staunchly against everything that's happening. Like he's like, that's not hope. Yeah. And he's so very much like the Fremen, need to lead the Fremen. And then it's like so quickly he just like wakes up and he's all like, okay, I'm going to do all the things I just said I wasn't going to do mm-hmm. just so I can be awoken. And then that whole process, like there's something going on with that sister. Like he is. Easy, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. There's some like well, mind weirdness going on. A big thing on. in this was that right from the beginning, right? To him, it's like he's got that first whole half and then all of a sudden he realizes something big happens and needs to change. But it happens yeah. so quick for the viewer. Yeah. But Lady Jessica from the beginning, it goes... Right? We're gonna start planting yeah. seeds. Mm-hmm. You see her. That's what I mean. So she's she doing. She is that. planting it. But that's it's like, you know they're liars. Yeah, I know that. But I, him, he, he's the one I don't know yet because they haven't shown us anything. Well, that's from what him. I'm saying. What I else think has he she believes done? it. That's what I mean. I think she was purposely going into his dreams. Yeah. You don't feel so much like after he does the whole water thing. Like it's not him in there anymore. It How much of it is he responsible for? We see this a lot in a lot of superhero stuff where someone gets body there, swapped. It's like Dr. Manhattan-y. Well, there is this kind of Definitely thing. Definitely Dr. manhattan yeah. yeah. There is this thing with the Bene Gesserit where they almost like have a hive mind kind of approach. Like right, they, so it's they like they how much of it are his, his thoughts unlocked and not just him being controlled. Right, or yeah. influenced at least. That. And yeah. that's, what I, that's what I kind of assumed happened, but I was like, I really thought it would yeah, well, be a little bit it. more still of a process. Like yeah, say, so that's what I'm, dreams yeah. are one thing, but what you're doing when you're awake, that's right. what you get blamed for. Yeah, absolutely. He oh, still he's still doing it. He's definitely still yeah. doing it. That's what I mean. I think it was, to me, it's not just the way he started acting after he drank it. It's getting him to that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's the making the decision to even be there. Which, if it had been that's like, powerful in and of itself. Just that, that's right? what I mean. If it had been a little bit more manipulative, if there had been some like weird lie, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. rather than him being like, no, I, I have to do this Something now. Something more I, to I, get him to potentially, well, like, not fully believe, but at least entertain you believe. Would I the Bene Gesserit he... not getting the crazy person in the position to fire them that would lead them there maybe not be it? 
I think it's like a little bit, I because like the last thing that happens before he makes that decision is he has the dream about Chani's face being like mm -hmm. burned right, after right. they do the atomics. But for some reason, instead of him why being like he, the atomics is not the right answer why here, why does he have dreams at certain times? That's what I'm. That's what I'm thinking too. Because that somebody's, even Fade said, "I dreamt of you last night." Why? Yeah, and then specifically things like it? you haven't yeah, had the these dreams in a while. You hadn't had these dreams, dreams in a, in a right. while. So why right now? Because she was just like, "Oh, the sand. Oh, it's making saying, you, yeah. you know, more the spice. But, spice. The spice, the spice. Yeah. Oh yeah, when he ate that food, he's like, "There's spice in this." Yeah. I don't think. Did they say in the first that it's the spice that turns their eyes blue? Yeah. yeah. The oh, more okay. spice yeah, that they have, the more yeah. they They also get weird. They end up turning into like semi worms and stuff. Yeah. The more spice you take, the more you become like that. Mm. So yeah. that's where I'm curious what they do with Messiah. If they get as far as... I mean, we're full spoilers here. Do you care? Are you going to no, read? No. You gonna read it? No, I'm not going to read it. You got six books. You going to read? <laughs> I, I have a whole I lot like else on my shelf. I like try to guess. You were talking about uh, Star Wars, right? Yeah. yeah. So he's not... Luke. No, no, no. Because he's, he's, he's the sub, yeah. he's the subversive. Exactly. I, I've heard the, it's he's a, the he's the countered hero's journey. Exactly. I've heard it's a space Hitler story, yeah. right? Yeah, that's yeah, what he's it is. He's Anakin Skywalker. Yeah, yeah. He's the but one like, who gives birth yeah. to twins. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And Leto would be the Luke Skywalker. Mm. Leto becomes so big, I think named after his father as well, mm. after Grandpa. Yeah. Um, he becomes a worm. Hmm. Like he has so much that's place, cool. he becomes a worm, and he becomes the Emperor God. Damn. So what I'm asking is, where the hell do you see that pivot? Yeah, in movie well, four, five. Well, well, that's that's gonna be the big question. Two, two, how are they handling this? Are they changing things up? Because I know yeah. a lot of people say stop reading Dune after this because then it gets bad. It gets weird. Yeah, I've we, heard it gets bad too. I've heard it's not good. I know they don't finish the story, but I, like I know how it ends. I think it's an interesting metaphor mm -hmm. for how he ends it. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'll read it because eventually. again, the whole point is like the idea of Dune, all the space operas, politics, yeah, yeah. all that stuff. It's the idea of how you approach life, right? The best yeah. lines in here are the the fear is the mind killer. I love it. Um, the you know dreams don't matter. It's when you're awake yeah. because that's when you make things happen. And I'm missing a third one as well, but about what life is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I'm gonna quote the Timmy version of it that he said in the interview. But there's a specific Dune line, and I'll mm -hmm. hopefully I can put the text there for the actual Dune line. But Timmy was talking about like what the meaning of life is, and that life doesn't move through you. You go through it or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. And it's again to me the whole sandwalk sequ uh, the sandwalk sequence is supposed to be how you approach life. Right. Always. You do a pattern, but not really. Yeah. Go off, Walk with your algorithm bit. and you won't attract the worm. There you go. Yeah. And it's all about the state of mind of a leader. I think that there's a whole, you know, the metaphor of how you approach life is the biggest part to do it and everything else is just fluff. I think that's why it's stuck around for so long. Yeah. And that's why every other big story that we know has taken from this because it's... It, they laid it out in the best way possible. And yeah. so much of it, yeah, you can go from Star Wars to this. It's Yeah. yeah. Pff, a yeah. lot has been taken. Uh, dude, when you realize that they're bringing Duncan, Idaho back, as a clone. Why are you telling me that? I, I just asked if you guys were going to read the book. <laughs> and I said I wasn't reading the book because I was trying to guess what was going to happen when I watched the movie. Well, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know, but it sounds like Clone Wars. Hell, fuck yeah. What I'm getting at, a lot of the basis for what we see in the Soul Universe, like yeah. of course we've seen it in other places, so it's really place. cool to see it now from the person. Yeah, that I think that was one of the biggest complaints about the first movie was that like I feel like we've seen all this before, but maybe it's going to end up going in a different direction. Yeah. It's like no, as you saw it before, because they're all taking from this. Yeah, like there's an argument some people have said that like. Uh, not a lot of people agree that like Dune was more influential to sci-fi than Lord of the Rings was to fantasy. I don't necessarily mm -hmm. agree with that because I think a lot of times sci-fi ends up being like a sub category of fantasy. Right. New Dune or like old Dune? What? This new Dune or old Dune? The book. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it, I, I think it is to fantasy. Like what Dune is to fantasy as a whole is very similar to what right. Lord of the Rings was for, or or for sci-fi as a yeah, whole yeah. and is fantasy For as sure. A whole. Easily. I that found out it was take... the Nebula winner, like the first inaugural yeah, it was. Nebula winner. And and I actually think that maybe I honestly find a lot of the fantasy stuff that takes from Lord of the Rings it's it's not always like the very blatant stuff. A lot of it's like the aesthetics are different different things. Yeah. It's like yeah. with this, it's so much that I'm like, that's just like this. Totally. The fucking no, Qui Gon and Stilgar. I was like, <laughs> it's like it's yeah. too close. Yeah. Right? Yeah. This is my experience when I watched the breakfast, breakfast the Breakfast Club for the first time. It's like, oh, every coming oh. of age movie I ever liked is just borrowed from this one. A little bit, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the gig is up. And if it's, it's not that one, it's the one Wizard of the of like ten other ones exactly. he's made, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, but it's good to see a good adaptation of that original thing. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, any final thoughts on, on Dune Part Two? You know, we mm -hmm. saw this in the, the Bullock IMAX theater Very museum, beautiful. which Very nice. uh, you've been hyping up. How is that experience for you? The I mean, true was, IMAX. I knew format? it was gonna be great. Did it live up to the hype? Yeah, it was that a really was nice good. screen. It was good. 
It's uh, it's great to see it in that epic presentation. You know, when yeah. uh, it when it's actually filmed yeah, to fill the it. screen, it feels it it feels that much larger, more more grandiose. Yeah, just the way the IMAX stuff when it started up, I was like, whoa. Yeah, because it's, I've seen it. Yeah. I've been in a couple IMAX theaters and I've seen that, and it's usually pretty cool. And that time I was like, whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it feels Shit. like you're transported. Yeah. The closest thing I could think of is that almost, and it's weird because they actually at the AMC that they took down that had our Navy Pier IMAX. Mm-hmm. It got turned into a soaring like thing, the ride at Disney, the oh. Epcot one, where you're dangling. Right, right. It got turned into one of those, which is funny because one, I love that ride. Yeah. I know it's probably not everyone's favorite, no, no, yeah, but the favorite. idea is is that when you enter IMAX, it's supposed to feel like that soaring yeah. feeling. It fills it up so it's just on your like peripherals. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's exactly the motion you're supposed yeah. to get. Yeah. And uh, yeah, there are some scenes where it was fantastic. That's why I said the Jedi, the Jetty scenes, which is what I'm saying, the <laughs> uh, Getty scenes, yeah. the ones were in black and white, dude. They looked like floating PNGs. Yeah. On mm-hmm. some scenes. Ah, oh, everything oh. I wanted from an experience like that. We haven't even. We never talked about fucking Leia Sadu. Yeah. Oh Leia Sadu. man. Well, um, you can't because this is future talk. It's yeah. It, right. Yeah. She she has only a couple scenes in this movie. She shows up to sort of manipulate Fade Ralpha into impregnating her. Mm-hmm. The, yeah. the legacy is secure. Yeah. She the says. legacy is secured. Um, I think she's so good as this kind of like like song siren mermaid is kind bit of like, like marjorie tyrell in game of thrones right where it's like i i know Damn, you're they go- copy too <laughs> <laughs> the emperor did look like he was in high garden <laughs> Damn you, game of thrones. Bit, she has man. this quality which is like i know you're gonna ruin my life but i think i'd do it anyway yeah yeah <laughs> you 100 there's a couple people like that there's some people out there <laughs> yeah. that are like that <laughs> so, yeah, you know yeah no, uh, but she, really she apparently is going to be, or at least that character and the Bene Gesserit or, or have a whole HBO or, or Max show. I don't Mini know series? where it is. Yeah. You hear about this? No. They've been pushing this for a while. HBO's getting ready to come out with the Batman stuff, with this stuff. Good. They're, I mean, and they got the last of what's going on right now. They are not playing around, but it's supposed to be a Bene Gesserit oh, miniseries. I think that's going to work. You know, Marvel just took the wrong approach. They're like everything. Every minute yeah. of your they life forgot, could be yeah. occupied by Marvel. Part to, uh, make put a good. Effort. Put effort. <laughs> make a good. Don't wait until after you do your big hype thing to just start ramming it down the throat yeah. so you gotta exactly. like bring it back down actually have a vision yeah. even the vfx seems have said why is this so different because they had a vision mm-hmm. they had a vision they're not just changing um, the very minute. specific and strict um like color palettes like working in the space of that so nothing mm-hmm. comes across as looking unnatural or yep. weird unless it's supposed to unless it's supposed to stand out like the blue yeah. that johnny has and like when it goes to the so start contract yeah there's yeah. purpose to every decision and Diddy's always been like that, man. Yeah. So I think the third one and whatever they have in the future is just going to make one and two better. Did we not say, oh, a lot of people were like, I don't know if I can give the first one. An, it's an incomplete. I got to see the second one. Well, now we've I'm seen like, it. No. Yeah, so people are pretending they never said that about the first one. <laughs> <laughs> so how much better is yeah. one and two going to be once we see three? I know, yeah. Right? No, and, that, and that's the thing. We talked about this in our first review is that there are elements of that first one that feel like they're just sort of the launching point to a larger yeah. story. And there are elements of this one that it is sort of just the continuation of this larger story. Yeah. I, I don't know if it feels as much as like a full, as I was thinking like Spider-Man 2 is probably the best second in a trilogy Yes, movie. Godfather 2. God, that's a whole other class. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I meant by Godfather now? Now that we're in full spoilers? Because I saw someone else bring it up, bring yeah. it up on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of it, it's not Empire Strikes Back. It's him closing the door yeah, no, on you're the right. woman that he loved in order to be able to follow his life. Something yeah. that in all of the Godfather, he's like, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Yeah, you're right. You're That's right, true. Actually. I had to explain this because in my house, I can't explain the Godfather because she hasn't seen it. <laughs> I'm just going to throw the Barbie quote at me. <laughs> Godfather? <laughs> I love it. Yes, the Godfather. No, but no, I agree with that. That that's definitely a thing. I also I saw somebody just that I know personally was like, it just doesn't feel like there's like a unified bad person that they're fighting against. And I'm like, there's so many She's... movies that are like that, but there also like is like, do you know what you're watching? Do you know what yeah. this story is doing? What do you mean? What do you mean? There's no unified bad guy. We've been watching him the entire yeah, fucking exactly. movie. Th- there is a unified guy. The bad... to come in. <laughs> <laughs> there is a unified mean? bad guy. We just don't realize how bad he is. That's yet. what I mean. And well, like, well, I saw that okay, coming yeah, from the first. There's also that one. too. Yeah. No, yeah. no, no. I started seeing that from the first one. But you're asking like a lot from. Dude, he Casuals. comes out. He's just like, you guys all fucking is... suck, and now I'm the best. He's like, he comes out at the end and I'm like, he said, you're gonna have to bring in the national guard to drag me out of here. Which one of you could? And at first when he did that, when they all get up and riled, I thought he was going to be like, yeah, now we've got you riled up and you're willing to fight. But people wanted to be Heisenberg. (laughs) Right? People wanted, I don't think people, if it's effective, it's because people are falling in love with this prophet. That's what I mean. Even me, I was like, the way that they took the story, I did actually think he was kind of going to be more like the mom being like, okay, we're going to manipulate them into thinking that I am this person. But he didn't want to be with that. And now he's 
now he's drank the Kool Aid yeah. quite literally. So, <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. Didn't Speaking he? of that, like sort of. Uh, move towards religious, religious fanaticism. I thought another really interesting mini arc is the way that, as we mentioned before, uh, when they first slay all those Harkonnen soldiers, they drain the water from them. Yeah. And at the end, they're burning bodies the same way the Harkonnens Rough. did. Yeah. And that's one where they actually, at the Ooh. beginning, show you the Harkonnen still burning their bodies yeah. to yep. keep it in here. I was like, okay, that's good for this movie. I don't have to go all the way back. Yeah. That, I love that bit because yeah. they good. just don't care. They don't care anymore. And leaving the Emperor's body out there with the worm or with the and we'll yeah. warm to, I guess. Yeah. Um, do you still? Is it still not a movie where you need to see the first? You do not get the relationship with Gurney. I think you yeah, do no. not get a lot. Like I hear people say this, but I'm like, I know you saw part one. It's not one, a standalone. So it's, it's not, not a standalone. Because no, even Denny has said the reason it's part one and two is because this isn't. A, he has one said and word two, for word. It's part one and part. He two. says yeah. this is not a sequel. The sequel is Messiah. Mm. Right. This is the second half, and I'm like. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I see that. That's what I mean. This feels like a. Comp- that's why. That's when we yeah. were rocking out. I was all like, "This feels like this should all be a mini series." And that was the thing that we were saying for Spider Verse yeah. and yeah. changing p- the part one and part two right. stuff. Right. Right. Yeah. So, so does that impact your opinions of this movie? Does that lessen it? Does no. it raise it? No, it, it ends up being exactly what I kind of assumed yeah, yeah. it was going to. Lord end of the Rings being. did this already. It is as advertised. Yeah, it's exactly what they're they're telling you that it is. Mm-hmm. I'm very excited what the future is going to be i think when he brings up the the you're going to be in the desert don't listen to the jinns yeah i think all of that is going to come back because i think messiah has him coming well he was back listening. And going mm. to the desert well he yeah started I mean, look, he did listen but before he flips he does the whole thing he thinks he's talking to Jameis again yes first time he he thought he was it was right zendaya right. it was zendaya. shani second there is a part where he is thinks he's talking to uh, i think he does another pilgrimage so we'll yeah, be able to see that in more yeah. detail maybe that's why it was cut out i mean shani is still on arrakis right so we got to get mm-hmm. back there at some yep. point um, a lot of really exciting stuff in store. I, I definitely huge fan of this movie. Yeah. Um, I think I'm maybe even a little bit like it a little bit more on my second watch through. I'm nice. I'm maybe trying to like pump brakes on all the five stars Stop. out there. Go. Yeah. Yeah, there's, a, there's just a lot of hyperbole around this movie and I don't oh, know yeah. if this is like the, the best action blockbuster I've ever well, seen or I told y'all it's, it's it was really really amazing two years ago that I went to the same theater yeah. on a Wednesday the exact same time afterwards and it was not as packed as you saw it there was not people dressed up Walking around outside like Fremen. Yeah, yeah. You heard he his suit was actually fully functioning. He never went to the bathroom. Yeah, he never went to the bathroom. Movie. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be in right in that. Um, so what you're saying is what we're actually going to do is you're not going to go see Imagination. And at 10 p.m., we're going to go see the 40X version <laughs> of Dune. Me. I'll, go see, I'll go see the Screen X with you. I'll go see any version of the movie. I'll bring my own sand. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Which, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Any final, final thoughts? Or are we just going to save final, it for final Dune thoughts. 3, Messiah? When are we getting Messiah? This is going to be a couple of years. Denny has said he wants to do a different movie before he does another Dune. So That's I think we're, but we'll have like the Bene Gesserit show. Oh, true. So I think they're taking that into account, right? Like we've already seen the editing and the screen, screen screenwriting. We've seen him cast people who he's not going to mm. use till later just to have. Yeah. Uh, he did it with Chani, right? Zendaya wasn't in it. Some people complained. Cool. Are you yeah. complaining now? Because yeah. she killed it with the second one. She did. Yeah. So what the hell are they going to give? Uh, Anya, Florence, Anya. Anya. Like it's about yeah. to be. Will Leia. we get more Tim Blake so Nelson? Next, Leia. Another one who's cut speak out of the about movie. That, yeah. yeah. But she's he's part of the Bene Gesserit uh, side of the story, right? Yeah. Married to a. Uh, Leia Sadu's character. Leia Sadu's character. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So how they're gonna go about that? What scheming he's doing that he's willing for his wife to go do that yeah. while he's with the Emperor? I'd even say, uh, I'm leaving out who I was gonna mention right now. If you wanna mention something, not else, Stephen but, McKinley Henderson or no, but he should come back as well. Yeah, just I, please I bring the parasol back. back to it. Um, yeah. yeah, um, I'm just um, looking forward to more time with Denise's vision of this world. It's yeah. gonna be really good. Uh, do you expect this to be in your top 10 of the year? I think you had the, f- uh, let's go with Amanda first, but mm. Art, you had the first one as your number one of You already know, bro. 2020. The people time traveling back in time, trying to put mm. Doom back a little higher. <laughs> Quite possibly. Last year was, I probably wouldn't have last year. Yeah, last year was a Thank really great year. God. Yeah. It did not come out last year. Last year Can you imagine dead. the Oscars this year with Woo! that on top of everything else going and on? And now yeah. doesn't it feel like everyone's living up to it yeah it's true mm-hmm. and the way everyone was like it's gonna bomb now that they didn't release it when it was supposed to release and i was like i don't think so yeah. 
if anything, this is just going to like build it. Has this written? Exactly. Has this written? No, we, we've seen in recent years uh, some of the most successful Oscar movies, whether it's a coda, whether it's everything everywhere all at once. Yeah. Movies that come out earlier in the earlier year. Earlier in the year. So oh, that's that have point. managed to keep the yeah. great point. I do wonder if we're in store for Dune's version of the Return of the King cycle, where it kind of came into the Oscars as the heavyweight. It was sort oh, of like it's Messiah. The, the crowning achievement. Well, you said you said Messiah starts to get into the parts of the book that get weird. And I wonder yeah. if they're not yeah. going to wait for Messiah. If like, this is the moment where it's mm -hmm. like, well, this is, he could still approach Messiah in a different way. And I think he the, might. I the think God Emperor might. stuff happens even a little bit later. He, right. he can like prep it for the next person, which Guillermo. Oh, Guillermo. He said he wanted to do a job of the hut. If we're learning that the job of the hut probably came from something from here. Yeah. I want to see Guillermo do okay. the original source okay. over okay. Star yeah. Wars. Right. Okay. But I do actually agree with you. <clears throat> what you're saying. One, do they want to give it to something called Part Two? That's what's going to live on forever, a Part Two. Right. Or do they want to give it to the one called Dune Messiah? Mm. That sounds like what you put on the gold. Return yeah. of the King sounds yeah. like what you put on the gold. Yeah. Not two towers. <laughs> <laughs> but I would give Ooh. it to it as of I right would, now. Yeah. But I mean, we have a whole year's of movies. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We'll probably talk a lot more about Dune in the future. Uh, we're going to be talking a lot about South Kung by Southwest Panda movies Four. in the near future. Going to hopefully be back for an Oscar stream post Oscars mm -hmm. on Sunday night. Um, immediately afterwards. Immediately afterwards. So, yeah, a lot, a lot coming soon on the Intercut Podcast channel. Thanks for yeah. tuning in. I don't have my whole outro in front of me. I'm just going to say uh, I'm Comment. at Zshevich on on socials and at Multiplex Show for videos on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. Go check out my Oscars feast thing. I don't know, uh, Amanda. Oh, sometimes my dreams happen exactly as I. <laughs> You know, dream them yeah. as as they occur. Uh, you can find me all over the place at Amanda the Jedi, mostly on YouTube. I lost my voice the other day. Oh no, that's bad. I'm doing good. Yeah, we're I'm we're tr we're fighting to stay healthy at the beginning of this. Film yeah, festival. I know, right? I'm great. I'm invigorated after watching Doom Part Two you're, for a second you time. You guys are usually the ones who show so up a little excited. sniffly. You're like yeah. a little sniffly. I make sure to take it out. I give it to you this time. No, uh, I give it I to the people on the road. Sick. I just. My voice got screwed up on the plane yesterday. You've been adjusted right in it's your ways. You can find me at LME Movies on Twitter. Use the voice. On the voice. I'm not. <laughs> this man's been doing the voice thing this entire week. Out of all the quotes he could do. Five star rating. Let him do it. <laughs> Five stars. We got the damn omen here. <laughs> Or you can find me every week here in the Internet Podcast. Uh, listen to us on whatever podcatchers you use. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, follow us on socials at Intercut Pod. And uh, we got a Patreon. We got a Discord. We got a lot of things. Check descriptions. Check other videos. Uh, mm -hmm. That's all for this edition of the podcast. And until next time, use the voice. Abomination. Do it. Abomination. Do it.